We've been hearing a lot of chatter about this fancy new steel called MagnaCut. In fact, we even have these exclusives from Microtech coming with it. And this steel was designed by Laren Thomas, who's a metallurgist and writer of KnifeSteelNerds.com, and he claims that it has some performance off the charts. It has toughness like that of your super high-end carbon steels, it has edge retention like your super high-end stainless steels, and stainlessness rivaling that of even H1. That's a really tall claim for just a simple knife steel, especially for the price you're paying for it. So, in the immortal words of Project Farm, we're gonna test that. Well, as you can see, we're here at the Great Salt Lake. And in case you haven't heard, we're in the middle of a multi-decade mega drought. So the lake's like a quarter mile that way. I got this bucket. Guess you better get walking. I never thought I'd make this sound, but <laughs> we got a lot of record snowfall this year, so if I may your attention to the mountains in the very far distance, that should all be in the lake here pretty soon. Well, found some water. Let's fill this bucket up. Well, we're gonna take this water back to HQ. We're gonna fill up some jars, and we're gonna run the same test that Ben ran back in 2017. In the first jar using D2 steel, we have the CJRB Feldspar. In the second, the CPM S35VN Spyderco Tenacious. Third, the Summit Knives Half Dome with an M390 blade. And lastly, Magna Cut, found on the Bradford Guardian 3. We left these in salt water for three weeks and let the salt water do its magic. So we're in the middle of the time lapse here, and as you can see, Theo's over here knocking this film off. We actually messaged Ben Peterson, my good friend, who ran this test before, and we asked, what did you do about the film that's growing on top of the salt here? He says, oh, we had to go knock it off, or it would have taken months. So we're in here knocking film. It's almost mm -hmm. like um, uh, like the skin of an onion. Anyway, we'll get this time lapse rolling again, and hopefully we'll see this thing finish out nicely. at the end of the time lapse and I, I must say I'm fairly impressed with the results here. So over here on the right, on my right, your left, we have D2 and I'll just exhume that from its watery grave. Look at that, absolutely destroyed. Let's see if the lock will actuate. Oh hey, yeah, it actually will. This is an abomination towards all knife things. Yeah. Absolutely fried in the steel there, but it looks like it can kind of rub off. Next, S35VN on this Spyderco. Tenacious, man, the salt is everywhere. Man, also very impressive on the locks, everybody. I think on the H1, the lock backs might have fused a little bit harder because they could go up and clog the spring. But these ones, no, that one's not opening back up again. Yeah, there it is, there it is, engaged. On the 20CV, this one I'm interested in because of the micarta. So this one, you can see it looks like maybe the pivots rusted a little bit. <laughs> Look at that, it won't even close. There's just so much salt right up in there. And then lastly, what you've all been looking for is the Magna Cut. And it looks like, so I actually talked to Eric Glesser about this at SHOT Show. He was saying that the reason they polish the spines so much on the salt series and on the natives is because of this. If you have a little bit of a rougher spine, like they like here for striking ferro rods and whatnot, it can allow rust to build up, but it just rubs right off. Nothing on the edge, that stuff rubs off as well. It might take a little more elbow grease, but I can't imagine it would show up on the handle, but not on the blade if it was not this piece of metal right here. So we'll have to take that apart and see what's going on. We got all these salty boys all rinsed off, and now we're gonna talk a little about what the damage we saw. First of all, that CJRB action came back really well. They always had a good detent and a good pivot and everything, but like, I'm surprised after just rinsing it out, it is back in business. But that D2 steel, 
it, it's not a stainless steel. There's nothing you can say about that. It like, let's see if I can catch that in the light. Like you can see it's got staining, it's got rust that I wasn't able to rinse off. So Laren said bring a, a, a non-stainless steel along like this one, just to see how it is. The moral of the story, if you're, if you're playing in the water, keep your D2 out of it. Next up is this one, the Spyderco. And what I noticed about this one is its action did not come back at all. Like it is crusty and crispy now. And look, like it used to be a satin, but now it's almost this like matte bead blasty finish. So if you, if you don't have a bead blaster, but you want to finish like this, just soak your knife in very salty water for a couple weeks and you'll be there. But the, the lightweight handle, that FRN, rinsed out really nice, still as vibrant as it was on the first day. Next up, we have the M390 on the Summit Half Dome. And I thought this steel performed a little bit less than I was expecting, perhaps I could say, because I know it's a very stainless steel and it's very popular on folders because it offers excellent edge retention. But you can see it just stained just a teeny little bit. It's by far, it's far from a ruined knife. You can still use this very well, but it did stain just a touch and the titanium and the micarta held up really well. And I was very impressed with the micarta. I thought the salt water for sure would have destroyed it. Summit Half Dome, a solid performance. And lastly, the Bradford Guardian 3. And it had a very small amount of rust you could see in the time lapse forming along the spine. That all washed right off. And the rust that came from the hardware, which accumulated along the spine and along here in the handle, just rinsed right away. So compared to the results of the last corrosion test we did, I would say this compared very well. I would say it was somewhere between VG10 and the LC200N they tested. It doesn't quite have the corrosion resistance of H1, but it's definitely running in the same league. Now let's see how it does on edge retention compared to some of the best, followed by toughness. So for the edge retention test, I've brought Theo on and we have agreed to a gentleman's bet, which is I believe that the higher carbon and carbide content of the 20 CV is going to outlast the magnet cut and edge retention. What you got to say? I'm pretty sure that the uh, newer and more fancy steel is gonna do it, but we'll see. Get a load of this guy. <laughs> anyway, so for our gentleman's bet, we have two Hogue Decas, identical knives. I, just the only thing that's different is steel. Let us open them. Fresh from box. My steel's magnet cut. Oh wait. Mine's also magnet cut. Bro. I mean, these three are magnet cut. <laughs> All right, let's see. Got our little edge tester here, see how sharp we are. All right, let's see how sharp 20 CV is off the very top. In terms, looking for lower numbers, lower numbers mean sharper edges. And we have 198. Very respectable. And Magna Cut brings in 271. So out of the box, the hand sharpened edge, all production knives are sharpened by hand. This one is a little bit duller, but we're looking not for necessarily sharpness out of the box. We're looking at the way the edge retains, what percentage of loss we see at the end of the test. So I've devised a test. Each of us will go, we will take our cardboard, stab it 10 times. Then you gotta prop it up like this and cut all the way down. Then you gotta take that, get 10 slices of paper, big long slices. I'm not gonna be picky about exactly how long. And then five cuts through 100 grit sandpaper. And then lastly, 20 cuts through the sisal rope. Think you're up to the task? All right, you ready? On your marks, get set, go. Ah! Let's see how the steels hold up. All right, let's see. Twenty CV. We got a solid 360. <laughs> <laughs> that edge got destroyed. That's, a little, that's over <laughs> double what it was. 360, oh my goodness. <laughs> and this one was, and we got 373. It was 270 when we started. Okay, 270 to 373? In terms of percentage loss of edge, MagnaCut takes this. Well, 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 George. Newer is better. I mean, I have MagnaCut in my pocket, no, so. We both, we both do. <laughs>
Well, Magna Cut just toppled one of the greatest giants in edge retention, 20 CV. Let's see how it does in toughness. Toughness is a measurement of when the steel breaks. And you can do this mathematically by doing a graph where your y-axis is force applied and the distance of deformation. So a steel that's very hard will have a lot of force and then it'll just break and that's the break point and then it drops here and the area under the curve is your toughness. On a very tough steel, it'll go for a long time like this and then break and then this is the area under the curve. Ideally, MagnaCut should be more like this one and less like this one but let's test it out. If we're gonna test it out, we gotta break something. So we got ourselves this epic scientific test jig. We got a piece of 1095 in the vise. Let's see if this anvil can break it. I think we might need more weight, but we don't have more weight. Well, that didn't work. Lucky for us, NIST certified Charpy testing exists. In a test, a piece of steel is hit with a pendulum and breaks. The potential energy from the backswing is subtracted from the potential energy of the initial swing, and you get the force it took to break the steel. Here's where MagnaCut stacks up. You get equal toughness to CPM 4V at 62 HRC, which is awesome. What I find most impressive is how it compares to 1095. You get slightly more toughness than the most popular fixed blade steel at a bonkers 64 HRC. That's crazy. Well, from the looks of it, MagnaCut lives up to the claims that Laren made. It's a really a miracle steel. Great corrosion resistance, off the charts edge retention, and toughness like those carbon steels. It might just be the best knife steel in my opinion. Anyway, we're gonna give these ones to you. We're gonna hide them right here. We'll flash some coordinates on screen. Come find them. And when you find it, use the hashtag IFoundTheBHQMagnaCut. Tag us on Instagram, we'd love to see it. Anyway, see you on the next one.